I recognize that talking about data science and demographics can be a bit mind-numbing. I suspect that this partly contributes to the unfounded and untrue belief that these areas deal only with minor details and occupy the time of small minds who have little imagination or little else to do. They focus on pesky little issues that are getting in the way of the bigger picture of saving lives. I'm hoping that this session has helped dispel those notions. Now, you've been gracious enough so far to indulge me as I try to explain my thought process to you, so I'll impose on you one more time. You may be wondering by now why I am showing all these images related to casinos. It's because the principles behind the casino business are directly related to our work in biomedical research and healthcare. For those who may think that healthcare and research systems do fairly well right now as they stand right now, I want you to consider the following. The casino business is based on ensuring that enough of the risk in each game is in its favor to make a profit, even if it's only slightly in the house's favor. The slot machines are a great example of playing with those odds and how they pay out for a casino to stay in business. The odds of hitting the jackpot on a slot machine can be easily calculated, but the casinos do not pay out winnings based on those true probabilities. They pay based on a portion of those odds, and they manipulate the math and the machines to make a profit. Now, these activities are regulated by state gaming commissions so that players think they're being treated fairly. But the rule of thumb is that if you stay in a casino long enough, you will lose all of your money because the odds are always at least slightly in the casino's favor. But the casino cannot stay in business unless there are winners, and sometimes even big winners. So the casino promotes its winners so that customers feel that they have a chance in a system already stacked against them. The casino, though, will always have to have winners to offset the vast majority of people who are losers. Now, in healthcare, our goal is to have no losers. But how we generate the numbers of people involved in clinical trials and manipulate the data are keys to eliminating healthcare inequities, where small differences can make a difference. So, when we assess the state of equity in healthcare and biomedical research, and how people of color and the wide array of minorities are treated, we have to look at more than whether there are occasional winners. We have to look at the larger universe in terms of race, ethnicity, and gender identity to ensure that those patients are free, treated fairly and not simply as communities that only have an occasional winner in some kind of medical research sweepstakes. Now with that as a final thought, I'll end this session and I look forward to speaking to you again next time.